Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. I'm standing in front of Trinity College Dublin, which is indubitably Ireland's premier university. Worcester College Oxford seems to have copied the front of it a little bit. So it was founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I. She'd been the Queen of Ireland. Um, so whoever was the English monarch was also the Irish monarch since 1743, when our parliament here hailed the Lord of Ireland, who was the King of England, Henry VIII, as being King of Ireland. So that was that. Um, anyway, Elizabeth I said that she was founding this college to prevent the spread of popery in Ireland, that is uh, Roman Catholicism. Well, the college is going to have its work cut out because um, a clear majority of the population was uh, Catholic, most of us mainly of Gaelic descent, Danish descent, whatever else, and then indeed the medieval Anglo-Norman, Cambro-Norman immigrants from the 12th century onwards, most of them were still, um, were still uh, Roman Catholics as well. It's just some of the um, English, Welsh, Scots, even Manx immigrants in the 16th century were Protestants, perhaps I should say Anglicans more accurately belonging to the Church of Ireland, which is a carbon copy of the Church of England. Okay, some of the Scots were Presbyterians setting up a church which was really an imitation of the Church of Scotland. I shan't go into the doctrinal uh, distinctions. Um, so uh, this was a college in which obviously Latin was the major language of instruction at the time and English was the colloquial language of the undergraduates, boys only in those days. And um, its principal task was educating people to be clergy of the Church of Ireland, which only ministered to a minority of the population, 20% at tops. There are a few other Protestant denominations. Um, but had parishes all over Ireland, even in uh, parishes where there was not a single Anglican communicant, the Church of Ireland would appoint a um, priest there. Uh, it was a ludicrous situation, squandering so much money, and they rationalised it in the 1860s, what well, I mean, lay appropriation even before that, where um, ecclesiastical property was turned to um, secular uses. Um, so uh, this was where Protestants studied mostly. In the late 18th century, uh, Catholics started to study here as well, notably uh, Daniel O'Connell, although he spent some time in France, well that was boarding school beforehand. I've been photobombed, see how popular I am. And uh, Thomas More, the Irish poet, not the English saint, uh, also studied here. He of Irish melodies, the chap who um, coined the phrase the Emerald Isle. Remember, Ireland's traditional colour is blue, St. Patrick's blue. Um, as on the coat of arms of uh, uh, the Irish state, things like that. Um, the uh, British royal family's coat of arms in relation to Ireland, now Northern Ireland, has that shade of blue. So it's only from the 1790s that the United Irishmen looked to the Netherlands as an example of liberty. It was a republic, um, and they saw if you have dark, if you, you um, mix the orange and their blue, you get a dark green. And also there's the Emerald Isle kind of idea. Thing is, Leinster, that's the eastern province of Ireland, where we are, Leinster's flag has got a mid-green field and a gold harp on it. And so Leinster, being the dominant province of Ireland, was sometimes taken, this flag was sometimes taken to represent the whole of Ireland. A bit like in Great Britain, people often say England, even if they mean Wales and Scotland too. Sometimes even misuse the English flag for the whole lot. All right, so that's Trinity College Dublin, and, um, and the Roman Catholic Church wouldn't allow its adherents to study here, some people just did it anyway. It was something you could be excommunicated for. What, not for genocide, but you could for enrolling here. Come on, you must be off your rocker. I knew an Irish American who considered studying here in the 50s, and his family thought it was fantastic. He actually didn't do it in the end, but because it was in Ireland, they simply assumed that it must be Catholic, not realizing this was an island of unionism and Protestantism and a sea of Catholicism and nationalism. And then finally, 1970, the Catholic Church um, dropped its opposition to Catholics enrolling here. Of course, certainly from the late 18th century, Trinity had no uh, beef about accepting uh, uh, Catholics, except most of us didn't come because we were a priest from the race. Um, so that's it. Uh, it's, it's not got a political or religious affiliation or anything like that. And indeed, people who are in the United Irishman, like Wolf Tone, famously, perhaps notoriously, uh, he who studied here. Um, and so many Irish intellectuals um, have uh, sat at the feet of the Dons here. Samuel Beckett, just want to think, too many to mention, George Barclay. Nobel Prize winners, um, uh, Roy Foster, not that he's quite to my taste. All right, so I'll switch it off now. Trinity College, Dublin, a must visit if you're in Dublin.